Okay, everybody, we're back with part two of the video series answering the question, is love a purely chemical reaction? At the end of the last video, we just got done giving a partial explanation of why American anthropologist Helen Fisher was wrong in stating that no one can predict who reacts with who, and also that uh, chemistry between people is a mystery. So for one, Chemistry, affinity chemistry started in 1718 with Jeopardy's affinity table. And from there, tables got bigger and bigger and more chemists got involved in it. And that lasted for about a period of 150 years. Two good books on this are My Gun Kim's 2003 Affinity, that elusive dream, a genealogy of the chemical revolution. This covers affinity chemistry from about 1700 to 1800 and then we've got uh, Trevor Levery's Le Le book 1971 book Affinity and Matter Elements of the Chemical <coughs> Philosophy from 1800 to 1865 now we see a break in the, in the uh, period there where affinity chemistry dies off after 1865 and what happened is in 1800 uh, Alessandro Italian chemist Alessandro Volta invented the battery and soon thereafter chemists started using the battery to strip away electrons from atoms and molecules and discovered that uh, atoms attached to other atoms by in terms of valencies or numbers of bonds so valency chemistry developed and that had, had complicated the how affinity, affinity chemistry was interpreted the second factor in the picture was uh, thermodynamics 1824 French engineer Sadi Carnot initiated the science of thermodynamics with his reflections on the motive power of fire. So now there was a science of energetics, and so you had to energetically predict in more detail what exactly were these affinities between reactants. Now, going back a, little, a few years, the biggest affinity uh, table that was ever published was Swedish chemist Torben Bergman's uh, affinity tables found in his 1775 textbook, A Dissertation on Elective Attractions. Now in this table he had a 70, he had a 55 row, 50 column affinity table, the biggest ever published. And he diagrammed affinity reactions both symbolically and also verbally. Here's a single elective attractions. And he also had another, there's a couple more seats for double elective attractions. Now, Torben Bergman also diagrammed a number of 64 different reactions, double elective affinity and single elective affinity reactions using Cullen's uh, reaction diagrams. Now, Gotha was very influenced by this. So the key stimulator behind the writing of Goethe's elective affinities, which he considered his greatest work, was Torben Bergman's textbook dissertation on elective attractions, which was one of the greatest textbooks of the 18th century. Now Goethe was well schooled in all branches of knowledge, and as we mentioned in the first video, Goethe is one of the few people to have an IQ of uh, 210 or above. So in sum, in 1809, Goethe wrote Elective Affinities at the age of 60, which he considered his greatest work. He wrote this after studying chemistry for a period of 50 years, after attending the weekly lectures of his good friend, German chemist Johann Dabereiner. He came to the viewpoint that uh, humans were considered as chemical species and that relationships and the vicissitudes of love and friendships were determined by affinity preferences. So, in particular, a year before publication, Goethe told his friend Riemer that his idea for the new novel was to portray social relationships and their conflicts symbolically, as in using Cullen's reaction schemas and representing people as uh, A, B, C, 
technique that was pioneered by Bergman. And furthermore, according to Gotha, he states, the moral symbols used in the natural sciences were the elective affinities discovered and employed by the great Bergman. So according to Gotha, what is moral or amoral in terms of marriage, friendships, uh, occupation, throughput in life is a fact or set of uh, laws which are determined by affinity chemistry. And we've been talking about Cullen's reaction schemas in the last few minutes and we haven't really explained that. In 1757, Scottish physician and chemist William Cullen began using uh, Jeffrey's affinity table in lecture when he pioneered the use of uh, uh, affinity reaction diagrams. This is what chemical reactions used to look like in, in the year 1757. This is a the bracket here is a bonding bracket. shows that A and B are in a chemical union. The arrow shows the affinity preference. A has an affinity tendency or preference for C and well, if such that if C was introduced into the system, A would elect to bond with C over that of B. So, modern chemical reactions, Cullen's scheme has slowly evolved over the next uh, 200 years into the modern representation. So in this case, A and B are bonded in a chemical union. C is the third species or molecule introduced into the system. So C displaces B forms a union, the AC union, and B is uh, left to go on its own. This is a modern modern term would be called a signal displacement reaction. In the older version, it would be called a single elective affinity reaction. So, go to use a number of these uh, reactions. Most of them a lot more complicated than this one. In his elective affinities, each chapter is a, has a complicated reaction affinity reaction. So we'll go through one example. Chapter 3 of elective affinities. Uh, a and B are Edward and Charlotte. They're bonded in a, in a marriage here, but it's a dull marriage. So Edward decides to invite the captain, C, pictured in the corner here, to come and stay with them on the estate. So when the captain comes, Edward, A, has an affinity preference for his friend the captain who he hasn't seen in such a long time and they start re rekindling their old friendship and hanging out in the state and Charlotte gets displaced or left out of the, uh, the, in the after the arrival of the captain. That's just one example. If you a good book if you want to go through some of the reactions step by step is the 1990 book A Rom Romanticism in the Sciences. And you'd skip to chapter 18, uh, Goethe's use of uh, uh, chemical theory and elective affinities. All right, we're running out of time, so we're going to jump right to the answer. And the question is, love a purely chemical reaction? Fact one, the human being is a 26 element molecule. First calculation of the molecular formula for a human being can be found on page three of the 2002 textbook Ecological Stoichiometry by American limnologists Robert Sterner and James Elser. The idea that a person is a molecule goes back to the 1869 publication of French philosopher Hippolyte Tynes on intelligence who coined the term human molecule. For more information on this, the reader can go to Amazon and get the uh, 2008 book, 120 page book, The Human Molecule. It skips through the 40 people over the last 139 years who've had views on the human molecule and developed theories on that. 